Hello, and welcome to the Science of Frankenstein. I'm your host, Joey Shavi. The story of Frankenstein was created by Mary Shelley in 1816 after she had a horrible, scary dream, and she turned it into one of the greatest science fiction novels of all time. It centers around the title character, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, and the creature that lays before him. In this story, Dr. Frankenstein longs to have the knowledge to create life. He has studied the science of his time, and he is ready to make a huge but controversial breakthrough with his experiment. Finally, after all my research, it comes to this. I have studied the books of Cornelius Agrippa. I know how electricity is needed to start the heart. I have studied the mysteries of creation. I have diligently followed the findings of Erasmus Darwin and his pursuit of the origin of life for seven long years. Mastering the human anatomy has not been easy, but it was all worth it. Now to bring my creation to life! <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein has mastered and created the human body. Using parts from many individuals, the monster was complete. All of the systems were in place, including digestive, respiratory, circulatory, all jump-started by electricity. Chemist Humphrey Davy wrote a book called Elements of Chemical Philosophy, which proved galvanism. Galvanism is the science of healing and rekindling life via electric current sort of like today's defibrillator. Here we see the basics of the electric current as it travels from the battery to power the light bulb. Much the same was Dr. Frankenstein's thinking in linking the electric current to the heart and the brain of the creature. It's alive! It's alive! Ah! It's hideous! Oh, I'm proud that I've created such a repulsive creature! At this point, Dr. Frankenstein is showing signs of defensive coping, a Freudian term in which a person will flee from a perceived bad situation. Unfortunately for Dr. Frankenstein, the monster he has created continues to seek him out. What do you want? Why would you abandon your own creation? You left me in a state of confusion and I had to learn everything by myself. Familiarizing myself with things like light, dark, hunger, thirst, cold, one day I found fire and was happy at the heat it gives off. But I was confused when I burned myself when I touched it. I had to learn I could keep the fire alive by adding wood. And that fire is good, not only for heat and warmth, but it makes food taste better. Here, the monster is describing open conditioning, or trial and error learning. In open conditioning, an animal learns to perform an act in order to receive a reward. Psychologist B.F. Skinner famously studied this type of behavior. His rat was put into a cage with different levers. Through trial and error, the animal figured out that there was one particular level that produced food from a dispenser every single time. The monster figured out that fire made food taste better and more edible but it can't hurt him if he gets too close. After I scared so many people away, including you, my creator, I knew I was not going to be accepted in any sort of community. I started listening to this one particular family. I learned their language, I read their books. I was unwelcome part of their family. 
when I saw how happy they were with each other, it caused me loneliness to grow and become overwhelming. <sighs> I approached a blind man and he was about to accept me as a good friend when the sighted people no. chased me away. No! No! no. no. Him. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This scene is very important because it reinforces the rejection that the monster had at the beginning of his life. Mary Shelley describes how it harms the monster psychologically. R.A. Spritz, a research psychologist, studied the reactions of newborns that were separated from their parents. He reports that infants have an inborn mutual readiness to respond lovingly to their parents or caregivers. When they are deprived of that relationship, they show signs of disturbance, including weight loss, agitation, violent crying, and even being passive and inactive. We see some of these disturbances within the monster who is also deprived of the parental relationship. The repetition of rejection after rejection causes confusion until the monster looks at a reflection of his own ugly self. The anger that he feels then shifts from the people who rejected him to the creator who rejected him. The entire plotline is propelled by the monster's rejection. What do you want from me? Ah! Ah! I want you to be made a female monster. I need a companion. Being lonely forever has driven me insane. I, I can't do it. I, it's, it's too hideous. If, if the deed is done, the creature will reproduce and create a devil race. How dare you! I will ruin your life as you have ruined mine! <laughs> At this point, we see the monster start to rebel, violently killing Dr. Frankenstein's wife, Elizabeth. We also see Dr. Frankenstein shirking his responsibility, knowing what the creature he created has done, and letting others face the consequences. Self-preservation is defined as the innate desire to protect oneself from harm by any means or consequences. Dr. Frankenstein blatantly demonstrates this when he allows others to be punished for the monster's deadly deeds. Namely, allowing Justine Moritz, a girl that lived with him when he grew up, to be put to death for a crime that the monster actually committed. 192 years ago, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein was a true work of science fiction. However, today, the line between fantasy and reality is a lot blurrier. There's things like organ growth and transplant, animal organs being used in humans, and they even cloned a sheep. And they're all leaning towards humans creating and controlling life. Let us hope that the scientific world of today proceeds more cautiously and responsibly than that of Dr. Victor Frankenstein.